2020. And as required by the open meeting law, you are hereby informed that the town will be video and audio taping as well as live broadcasting this public meeting. In addition, anyone in the audience who plans to video or audio tape this meeting must notify the chairman prior to the start of the meeting. I see no interest in that. I'd ask you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll move to our, uh, what's that? Is our standing agenda item, Joe, on the, where we are in the sewering, other than they're banging around my house now uh, all day long. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, if, uh, with the board's indulgence, what I'd like to do is uh, use this time to also bring uh, the board up to speed on uh, a meeting that occurred today with several parties. And um, at the end of it, if, if I don't say it specifically, the, um, the expectation is that there would be an uh, agenda item next week uh, for the board to have an opportunity to further vet uh, what I'll update you on and also get feedback from, from the community at large. Okay. Um, so what that's a reference to is we had our, our monthly uh, meeting with, um, with the contractors uh, last week and meeting with Robert B. Auer regarding contract one. Uh, as everybody now knows, they're now progressing to the intersection of Route 39, Route 137. Um, by the way, I'll just start out by saying the information that was put on the uh, police department's Facebook page was confusing, so Lieutenant Sullivan was updating that information to be, uh, to be more accurate as they progress to that area. The intersection is not going to be closed per se, but there are going to be detours and um, um, instances where traffic will be stopped, but there's better information that was put on the uh, police department's Facebook page this evening than what was out there earlier. But it was that discussion about the uh, intersection work where Robert B. Auer advised uh, the town, CDM Smith, Weston and Sampson and others assembled that once they concluded that work through the intersection, they're now in the final stretch of that particular contract and specifically uh, Route 137 heading towards Pleasant Bay Road. And so they're, they're asking the town uh, to consider a number of options, um, several of which would include uh, closures of Route 137 from the intersection through Pleasant Bay Road at certain times for certain lengths. And obviously, um, that's a far bigger issue than what was brought up last week. So based on that discussion, uh, working with Charlie Sumner from Weston and Sampson, uh, the Chamber of Commerce through Cindy Williams and uh, President of the Chamber of Commerce, Abby Auer, <coughs> Um, we were able to assemble uh, a meeting today where uh, staff met with Robert B. Auer, CDM Smith, Weston and Sampson, and many of the merchants along the Route 137 corridor to start getting feedback on uh, what may occur in that corridor for this work. Uh, in addition to that, Charlie Sumner has reached out when we'll be meeting uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of this week with both uh, representatives from the Lighthouse Charter School as well as representatives from St. Peter's Lutheran Church. So obviously the major audience missing from this discussion are the residents uh, in the town generally, but certainly residents that live upon, along that corridor. Really what the issue comes down to is in the contract it states that wherever and whenever possible, uh, travel lanes be uh, included where they're doing the work. Uh, Robert B. Auer, if I may state their case very limitedly, I think would say, if that's a word, that um, they're not convinced that they can do that. So we are <coughs> having frank discussions about <coughs> the concept of wherever possible. However, I did um, advise all of those assembled that I, I think the potential impact in the community is such that it would warrant a broader discussion um, through the Board of Selectmen at your meeting on March 9th. And so I would be asking the Board to uh, support an agenda item in that regard on, on March 9th for you to hear feedback from all of those constituencies that I mentioned as well as any folks that are hearing about it for the first time by me stating it, including the board members. Uh, staff has already been working very diligently on presenting 
background material and I'll be doing a recommendation memo to the board as to what I think appropriate next steps are. I also advised all of those assembled that one of the options the board may avail themselves of is to redirect the issue to the town administrator, uh, excuse me, the acting town administrator, and I am prepared to do so. Um, however, I, I did think that this is big enough that the board should be aware of it. Um, you're going to hear about it one way or the other, and um, I did promise all of those assembled that I would alert everybody to this issue. So obviously no decisions have been made, nor would any decisions be made, unless and until the board had a chance to weigh in on this. However, we are mindful from the contractor that I, they are soon encroaching upon that work in that area of town. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jill. I know uh, a particular concern is the uh, Harwich paint and their fear that uh, it basically would close them down for not a few days, but, but several weeks or months, which would, you know, in our Cape Cod uh, seasonal culture, business would, would be uh, uh, not good. To understate it. Yep. Now, uh, are, is your intent to come back next week with some options then to? Uh... A absolutely, and, and that's what you'll see in the packet. Again, from my perspective, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a simple reading of the contract. Yeah. But you, know, that's, you can come back to yeah. it. My other question is, uh, in timing, when, when will uh, RBR, when will they start the 137 work? So uh, we agreed that they wouldn't start anything until we had a chance to vet this in a more public venue. Okay. So they wouldn't be doing anything unless and until the board had a chance on the 9th to weigh in. Yeah. And they've, they've been planning yeah. accordingly. And in fact, I believe the three-week look ahead that I'll reference tonight incorporates that reality. It's not to state the obvious, but we need to uh, work with uh, Robert B. Hour. They have you know, great reputation, great, great uh, company in town. But we can't afford to close down a business for uh, extended periods of time either so I'm, I'm hoping we uh, figure something out I, I, I'm confident we can and, and again um, it was uh, I have a list of the attendees for today it was uh, I think a very comprehensive uh, list a great group and um, and they were very willing as we would expect uh, to give feedback and I think it's fair to say that those folks are willing to continue to give feedback especially directly to the board um, any other questions you you want to uh, Continue on with your. Uh, I can, unless there's objection from the board when we do our agenda build. I was going to recommend that this be a matter that come up on the March 9th agenda under right. public hearings and presentations. Yep. Not no, that it would be conducted as a public that, yeah. hearing, but. Yep. I assume there's no objection to that. No. I don't, don't want to speak yep. for the uh, mistake and make speak for the board here. But. Uh, thank you. Then I'll proceed to the update. So the first one is for phase two <laughs> contract one. Again, this is the work that's being done by Robert B. Hour. The one week look ahead for the week of March 2nd, mainline sewer crew number one is continuing uh, gravity sewer installations on Alexander Chase, Spence's Trace, and Hall's Path. And that crew is also working with subcontractors in and around that Route 137, Route 39. Their mainline sewer crew number two continues the work on Route 137. And again, as they uh, proceed towards the intersection, uh, there is an expectation that on Tuesday, March 3rd, the intersection will be impacted directly by the work. They're hopeful that they can conclude that within a day or two, uh, a business day or two, depending upon um, how quickly they can get that work done. We don't expect weather to be an issue, so that should be uh, helpful there. Their two-week look ahead for the week of March 9th. Again, sewer crew number one would continue on gravity sewer installations. Next week, they're looking to finish up on Hall's Path and then proceed to Chris, Joe, Beth, and right now they're saying quite simply that they would continue work on Route 137. Um, again, sure. not to the point that we just discussed, they wouldn't proceed uh, until that matter is <clears> cleared <throat> up as to how, how so, extensive it will so be. So, Joe, if I may to clarify that, and you say this is incorrect, the note I got this afternoon was they were going to close down uh, Old Queen Anne and uh, 137 and Old Queen Anne and Church Street. Uh, that is not correct then? That's so I, b I believe that one, they may be getting to the RJV update, which I'll, I'll get okay. to uh, RJV had asked for um, a detour, and I'll have an update in a moment okay. on that one. And then lastly, for Robert B. Hour, the three-week look ahead of March 16th, again, they would continue work on Chris Joe Beth, and remains to be seen what the work they would be doing on <laughs> Route 137 at that point. Um, again, there's an expectation that they will be working on Route 137. It's a question as to how extensively and how long? 
And then for contract number two, which is RJV, so for this week, they are continuing their work on both Southwest and Northeast uh, drives, which are requiring road closures between 137 and Church Street. The two-week look ahead, they would expect to continue to work in that area. Again, road closures. Uh, the three-week look ahead is starting sewer work on Church Street, and they were talking about road closed between Bay Road and Queen Anne. Uh, at the conclusion of the meeting that we had today regarding the merchants and the Robert B. Hour work, staff had a chance to speak with representatives from RJV. They had requested a uh, significant detour in that area. We asked them if it was absolutely essential. They indicated that they could hold off. So RJV and Robert B. Hour are working with staff to limit the, um, the extent and the number of detours. So at this point, we think we're okay, given where they're all working. And mercifully, that would conclude my updates on the weekly sewer Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> Any uh, questions, comments for Joe? Anyone in the audience? We should follow up. Excuse me, you have to uh, use a microphone and identify yourself. We're on TV, so you need to be famous. I hope not. Hi, I'm Marguerite Heffernan, and I live off um, Lawn Pond Drive. But um, can they do any of, from 137 to Pleasant Bay Road at night instead of having to do it during the day? Uh, I can, that question, we've asked them that. It's a matter of, uh, it's apparently much more expensive to do the work at nights, but that's one of the options that are being, are being considered. Right. No, maybe just some of it at night, just because the, you know, that's the thoroughfare from Route 6, so right. that's going to be a pain. No, it's, it's a good point. That's one of the, uh, I haven't been privy to all the options, but that's one that comes up. We, I know we came up right away asking about that. So. Okay. Is that correct, Jill? That is correct. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? If not, we'll move to uh, public comment. I'll be really quick. Um, Pat Birchie from the All Summers Family Support Center. And I just wanted to mention, um, we're here to ask for you to vote to approve the Dave Burtwell Memorial Walk for Alzheimer's that we do every year. And it's been going on about 10 years, but about four years ago, um, the Burtwell family started to raise the money and give it to the Alzheimer's Family Support Center because we're operating so much on the Cape. So I just wanted to make you aware of that and I brought a, um, a handout of all the services we have with some numbers of how many people we serve, especially in Harwich. So if I could just give them to the selectmen and leave some back here, I can't do that. You sure may. Taking your hoe. Okay. Ed's <laughs> yep. giving his permission, so I guess you can do that. Who do I ask permission of? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So the walk is May 9th and come out because Ed cooks the hamburgers. So, okay. So, but I really what, do what, seriously want the town to realize how much the Alzheimer's Family Support Center provides through the COA to the seniors in Harwich. What we will need to do is we'll add it to next Monday's uh, agenda oh. so we can take a formal. It's, it's on here. Today. It's on here. It's I'm on sorry. Here. Consent agenda. I got ahead of myself, so we'll take a vote tonight. And uh, good luck with the walk. Good, Thank good you. job. Thank you. Well, come out and walk. Yeah. Come have a hamburger. We did yeah. last year. Good. Thank you. Absolutely. Right. Anyone else for public comment? I don't know if it's public comment, but it's something I want to address for Lloyd. Uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Sure. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I see Steve. Item D. Huh? Yeah. We got that already. <coughs> All right. So, this is the first time I've done it. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my name is Lori Jalbert, and myself and my husband Steve live at 24 Church Street in Harwich. We also own an adjacent lot, number 10, where the town supposedly plans to build the pump. House, I have been trying to get answers to my questions about the project by coming to the town hall, calling, writing, and I'm unable to get answers to my questions. I'm here to ask those now and expect to get answers to these questions. I did not receive notice of the taking, so I submitted records requests to the town, to which I've also not received a response. What is the basis for the value the town assigned to the permanent and temporary takings of my home and property, including the lot? 
What is my resource if I disagree with the amount I am to be compensated for for the takings? Will the town assess the lot and home differently once the pump is on it? Where will it be situated on the lot? What are the dimensions? How much road frontage is, is it going to take up? Will it be in compliance with the Harwich zoning? When will construction begin? How often will the town access the tump, pump house once it's built for any water, sewer, or other work, including maintenance? What are the plans for maintaining the pump house once it's built, ensuring it does not become an eyesore? Is there any chance that it could be located elsewhere for X across the street? If the lot becomes unbuildable due to the lack of road frontage, the town will need to buy the entire lot at fair value, and we need this to be answered in a timely manner, or are they going to give me in writing that it is going to be a buildable lot? <clears throat> In closing, I just want to say that my husband has been battling cancer for the past year and we simply don't have the bandwidth for chasing this information down and I've been here several, several times. We have spent all savings trying to keep our heads above water. This land is what we have left. This directly impacts our lives and our financial well-being, so I would really like to get answers to my questions and resolve any issues that we have with the Pump House Project. Stephen and Laurie Jalbert, thank you. Uh, thank you. I, uh... I actually thought all those questions have been answered in all these properties we uh, are worrying about the sewer pumps on. But let me ask you, could you uh, leave the copy of the questions with our uh, town, interim town administrator and, and we can follow up? And so if I may, Mr. Chairman, sure. um, this is a potential uh, pending legal matter. Okay. Uh, the town's aware of it. We're working with town council. Town council will be working with the complainant's attorney. Um, when this came to my attention about a month ago, a month and a half ago, um, it came, I became aware that uh, the green card was not returned, if you will, on the easements that were sent out in the uh, summer. Um, the town made efforts to, to resend that. It was my understanding that it had been resent. So I can follow up on the, the notice where a lot of those uh, questions would be answered. Um, but it is my understanding that it's a potential pending legal matter. Okay. So we'll have to follow up in that manner at this time. But thank you for your concern. Liz. Go from there. Uh, Megan? Hi, um, I'm Megan Eldridge. I'm the health director. I have two announcements tonight. The first is that we do have a vacancy on our board. Uh, the Board of Health is one member down currently. So if you were. Uh, for another 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if you know anyone in, with an interest in uh, the Board of Health, we'd. we'd uh, excuse me. I, I take the blame for that, Don. I asked her to make the announcement. She's, she's, she's mm -hmm. in front of the microphone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We'll play it back after this. <laughs> um, and then the second, as uh, the health department, I, I wanted to address the town regarding coronavirus. Um, if you've been living under a rock, you wouldn't know about it, but um, coronavirus is uh, rapidly evolving in the United States. Um, I wanted to quell any fears. We, we only have one confirmed case in Massachusetts as of this afternoon. Um, it's in Boston. It's the same case that has been quarantined over the last couple of weeks. Apparently the person is recovering nicely. Um, the State Department of Public Health does have test kits available at the state lab, um, and those test kits are now going to be available to healthcare facilities so they'll be able to to test for the virus now in, in Massachusetts. Um, something that some important points to give you is this is a respiratory virus just like flu um, so it's transmitted person to person. Um, there's important things that everyone can do to protect themselves. Um, avoiding close contact with people who are sick is very important. Staying home if you're sick is also very important so you're not spreading your germs to other people. Um, covering your cough and your sneeze and, and your elbow using tissues. Um, cleaning surfaces frequently that are, are, are frequent touch surfaces, doorknobs, handles, um, desks, your, your telephone. Think of anything you put your hands on throughout the day and, and use a disinfecting wipe to, to clean that surface often. Um, washing your hands, we can't state that enough. Um, hand washing, soap and water, at least 20 seconds. Make sure to get all those surfaces on your hands. Um, that's a great way to prevent the spread of germs. Um, if soap and water is not available, using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer does work as well. Um, and as I said, this is rapidly evolving. So 
even tomorrow uh, there'll probably be new guidance on travel restrictions and who needs to be isolated and quarantined. Um, we are not following anyone in Harwich right now. I know there was a rumor this afternoon about that. Um, I am not aware of any active surveillance of anyone in Harwich regarding coronavirus. Um, again, that may change with travel restrictions that the CDC is putting out nearly hourly. Uh, there was a press conference even late this afternoon um, that said that they were changing some travel advisories from South Korea, um, and I assume they'll be changing them from Italy as, as well soon enough. A note about face masks. Um, face masks are useful for people who are sick. Um, they can prevent a, a sick person from expelling the, the virus in their, in their breath through coughing or sneezing. They are not useful if you are not sick. So I'd, I'd like to tell people, leave them on the shelves for the people that need them, um, healthcare workers, EMS, fire, um, people that work in the hospital who work around sick people need to wear those masks to protect themselves. But if you yourself are not sick, there's really no point in wearing a mask. Um, so try, try your best to just social distancing. Um, doesn't mean don't go out in public, but it means be aware of people that are sick around you, stay, stay a safe distance away, um, wash your hands, wash, wash down surfaces that, that are commonly touched. Um, it's a good idea to update your emergency plan. Um, we're treating this like we are treating a seasonal flu pandemic. Um, it is a different virus, but we have plans in place for that. It's, it's very similar. Um, don't go out in public if you're sick. There aren't any, any vaccines available currently for this. Um, we're not anticipating an emergency dispensing site or anything like that at this point. Um, all information will be available on the town website. We'll get in touch with Channel 18 to make sure we have the most up-to-date information available to the public. Um, and I wanted to assure people that we are prepared. Um, the Health Agents Coalition has formed a subcommittee. We're meeting weekly to go over updates throughout the Cape. And on that conference call is the state, um, the hospitals, EMS. So we are connected with all the people that need to be connected. Um, and that's, that's all I have for you right now. I just want to let you know that the website is going to have some valuable information on how to prepare. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. I think, uh, Don? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, actually, a lot of people are aware of this, including uh, the younger people, because I had a conversation with our 12-year-old uh, over the weekend. I just wanted to broaden out what you said a little bit while you're here. Uh, as far as I'm aware, and I made this comment to her, is that I don't know of any cases on Cape Cod, never mind Harwich, because people do travel around. Yes, that's, that's true as, as far as I'm aware. Um, I would be aware of anyone who's been monitored or quarantined or isolated in Harwich. I wouldn't be necessarily aware if someone's being monitored elsewhere. Um, it's only the, the confirmed cases that I would know about. It would be helpful if the county actually had that up on their site because the one thing that is more uh, epidemic, if you will, in a, in a situation like this is uh, rumors. Right, right. So right now I want to stop the rumors. Mm -hmm. We do not have any quarantined people in Harwich. Okay. Uh, thank you, Megan. Uh, Joan and uh, Nora. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just as a follow-up, um, Megan has been uh, obviously very proactive on this issue. Um, she's also um, established we'll have a um, meeting next week. Um, we'd move it up if necessary, but we have a meeting planned for next week of staff related to emergency management services to discuss this. And as she said, we would be treating it at any other pandemic if need be. Yeah. So steps are being taken, and um, I think everyone can take comfort that the right people are having the right conversations at the right time. Let me just note that I got, uh, as I'm sure many people did, a, uh, an email from uh, Monmoy Regional School that they also have a plan mm -hmm. going forward of what, uh, even worst case, if they had to use the computers and ask kids to, to stay at home. So they've 
they've thought it through in the same way we have in town to be sure that yes you know their message is the same as yours yes Take reason precautions but calm down but they do have things in place if needed yes and the schools i've been in contact with the school nurses as well and and told them and they've told me how they've been handling things they were just we're able to make sure we're following the proper guidance don't forget the charter schools located here yes they are on the email list mm -hmm. and the tech school yes uh, chief okay thank you again thank Megan. you we're in really good hands yes we are <laughs> she has a handle on this she knows where all the schools are she knows she's got it <laughs> she's got it but just to reinforce what she said don't go to China, Iran, Italy, Japan, or South Korea. Okay. okay? And, if, and, if, and if your great aunt wants to come from Italy to say hi, sorry, you can't come. Wash your hands, cover your mouth. If you sneeze or cough, that's kind of how I was raised. And stay home if you're sick. To reinforce what's going on here, there's a bit of a panic going on for whatever reason, is that we are having trouble now getting the supplies we need to do our job. If you can't keep your police and your fire healthy, we're in trouble. And that's, that's where I'm concerned. When I'm going to go on a trip next week, and I went to two stores to just buy some sanitizer. They're all gone. Everybody needs to just take a breath here, relax. I need you to trust your, uh, your government, your local government, your county government, your state government. In your, in your federal government. They are truly on this. Again, Megan has this. But when it comes to a point when the guy that does our ordering says, Chief, I'm running into some problems here with masks and some of the sanitizers that we use many, many times a day, that's a problem. So help us help you by not overreacting. Please, I implore you to not overreact because we need to do our jobs. Not to be uh, flippant, but uh, maybe a good time to turn off TV. I turned on. I, I listened one, to a nationally renowned table, doctor. One. I listened to a nationally renowned doctor, and someone said, what should I do to deal with this? And that's exactly what he said. Turn off your TV. Because I turned on one station that basically said the world was coming to an end. And, uh, <laughs> as we know it. Again. <laughs> Again, so. And we'll be back right uh, after this ad. <laughs> <laughs> Emily. So I'm coming with a happy change of pace. Uh, Emily Mitchell, Council on Aging Director. I am excited to report that our next volunteer recognition event is happening this month. It's going to be March 24th, a Tuesday at 11.30 a.m., 11.30 to 1 at Jake Rooney's restaurant. <coughs> so it'll be a nice plated meal for all of our volunteers. Um, I'm thrilled to report we have about 90 active volunteers without whom we really could not provide the scope of services that we offer. Um, so I'm excited for this event. I'm thankful for the work that they do. I have invitations for each of you that I will bring up, um, and I hope to see you there on March 24th. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment Thank you. or announcement? Yeah, hello, uh, board, and good evening, selectmen. Uh, I'm Patrick Otten, 49 Kendrick Road. I want to share with you uh, an announcement of a community forum that's scheduled for March 12th at the um, Harwich Cultural Center Auditorium. It'll be a discussion about our municipal water and waste disposal. <coughs> Just how good is our water? A lot of people react in, in, on assumptions and beliefs. Harwich has the best water, but then I hear Harwich water is no good. I drink Harwich water all the time. I only drink water out of bottles. You know, it goes on and on. So I've asked uh, Dan Pelletier to come and talk to Harwich residents at this community forum about the quality of Harwich water, how is it tested, how often is it tested, what standards are being used, and just what it takes to bring us the water that we have in our homes. Along with that, I also asked Dan uh, Link Hoper to come and talk about the DPW and his job in managing the transfer station. Everything we touch ultimately ends up in the trash. We throw it away. Whether it's packaging, whether it's a vacuum cleaner, whether it's your, your TV set, refrigerator, it all gets thrown away. But where is away? Away is not here in the Cape, it's elsewhere. So I've asked Link to talk about his job and how the transfer station works. 
what are the economics of handling our trash? Specifically, I also want to know what's, what is recycling? What is recyclable and what isn't recyclable? So again, there are a lot of different beliefs going around. Oh, I can recycle this plastic. Oh, I can recycle that. But can we? Is it truly recyclable? What are the costs involved in how we handle our trash? So I've given you, and I have more handouts, uh, announcing this event for March 12th at the Harwich Cultural Center, which is the old middle school on Sisson Road. It's Thursday, uh, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. So it's going to be a question and answer session, both with Link and Dan speaking. Okay. So you're invited to attend. Okay. Thank you, Pat. I do uh, need to comment. You made it. Uh, I think someone guessed that our water may be bad, may be good, may be bad. Our water is good. It's tested not only for the normal, but I think a year or so ago we tested for PFAS and some other chemicals just to double check that. So we're, we are in great shape with our water. And we all need to hear that, right? As yeah, that's why I didn't want their statement to get out there without at least some clarification. Right. Steve? Um, just, just a quick note, uh, in case you, you didn't catch it, uh, our uh, uh, group that uh, does uh, Know Your Town, uh, yes. There was a very good program this past week, which right. had both Link and uh, uh, and uh, uh, David uh, talking about uh, both our water and the transfer station and so forth. It's great that you're doing a second one because this will be it was a evening. wonderful turnout. There really was a very good turnout and a lot of good questions. Um, so that program is really very good. But the more we can get people to understand uh, how these departments run and the services they deliver, it's great. So yeah. we shouldn't know. just stop here. You know, we need. Megan as well, you know, what is your job? What does she do? Then we get a better understanding of how we live here. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Thanks for that, Pat. All right, thank you. Any other uh, ones for comments? Public hearings? We'll move on to a consent agenda, Steve. If you okay, want. Consent agenda. A vote to accept the resignation of Matthew Cushing's MD from the Harwich Board of Health effective immediately. A vote to approve Caleb Chase fund request in the amount of $500. A vote uh, to approve the 36th annual Cape Cod Gateway MS bike ride, uh, June 27th, 2020, through June 28th, 2020. And vote to approve the Burtwell Memorial Walk for Alzheimer's, May 9th, 2020, at 8.30 a.m., going until 4 p.m. Second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, yes. Uh, Don? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just uh, Megan ducked out on me. Uh, she, she made a comment before, but I, I, I would like to make a further comment because she and I have talked about this. Um, whoever it is uh, that replaces uh, Matt, uh, be aware that uh, because it's the Board of Health, we're looking for a doctor, uh, an RN, uh, a pharmacist, a dentist, somebody involved with uh, med uh, medicine in one way or another, even public health. Uh, but if you fit uh, that loose criteria, we, we'd love to hear from you because we need some serious people and their work is very important. All right. Thank you, Don. Any other comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, on then to uh, new business versus vote for appointment of James Armstrong to the Board of Appeals as full member. Don, you... Uh, I'd like to move uh, that the Board appoint uh, James Armstrong to the Board of uh, Zoning Board of Appeals as a full member with a term to expire 2022. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Don, you wish to take the next one as well? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to recommend to the board, or I move that the board appoint uh, Brian Sullivan uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals as an alternate member with a term to expire 2021. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, someone want to take C for me? Someone want to take my point? Move to approve. Someone move. I move that we approve the hall cart thing. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. Weekday and Sunday okay, entertainment okay. license for go karts, nine Sisson Road, Harwich Port. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Anyone in the audience? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the next one is vote to approve Grand Slam Entertainment, Sunday Entertainment License for bumper cars. Move we approve the Grand Slam Entertainment, Sunday Entertainment License 
for bumper boats, battler in cages, zip line, and arcade at 322 Main Street, Harwich. Second. It's actually, though, it's 322 Route 28, Harwich. Yes, you had for the zip line, you think? No. <laughs> we'll strap you on. And <laughs> Mr. McInnes is right, and that was my second for Route 28. <laughs> okay. Any discussion? Second. Uh, anyone in the audience? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passed. Uh, then on to old business. We have. Uh, I put a memo in here on the uh, confidentiality process and. I think this is self-explanatory. In the past, we've had discussions about uh, the importance of this, uh, of all the applicants' information be treated confidentially. And uh, we've had some discussion whether uh, uh, selectmen should be uh, able to look at those uh, applicants. Mm -hmm. Had a good discussion, uh, I think, was it last week with the search committee, uh, with our uh, uh, legal counsel there as well. And as I stated here, uh, although abs uh, not an absolute, the uh, town council impressed upon us that we have to take all the access we can think of to be sure that these applicants are treated confidenti confidentially. The other uh, discussion that we had is, is that the process we've uh, put in place, we appointed an excellent search committee and they should be allowed to do their, uh, do their committee activity without uh, even the appearance of of influence from the selectmen and so that uh, they would look at that and do their job <coughs> in this memo that's in front of you I, I do remind you that we we still have some power here we appointed the search committee to get a broad base and we also uh, will in the end we'll uh, decide on uh, who we want to offer the job to what we've asked the search committee to is come with us to with some recommendations so uh, I ask you if you have any questions I that's not clear in my memo but I'm hoping that you will uh, uh, vote to uh, in concurrence with my uh, suggestions I did get a uh, Michael was one that I think was uh, concerned about this I did get an email from uh, Michael he's unable to make it here tonight uh, that he was uh, comfortable with uh, with this and agreed to it his concern is is that he wants to be sure that uh, the search committee uh, look at all the applicants that we don't allow the, or don't uh, have the uh, our consulting firm screen out and so they may screen out the top some other number and then not in the search committee not look at those and they want to be sure even though the well I'm repeating myself now that is they do their job full bore even though we ask the consulting to give their recommendation I, I believe uh, if, you, if you look at their proposals and through the comments that were made by at least the two that did present, um, they did all agree that all resumes received would be they shared. They did, yes. You know, so. yeah. Don? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to talk to something that isn't in this at all, uh, and it should be, uh, that just there is going to be confidentiality for the people who aren't going to wind up being finalists because the, it's important right. to keep the in legal counsel has concurred that that's true. But you're doing the uh, deliberations in executive session, uh, and rightly so, because they, they fit under uh, that exception under Mass General Law. But don't fall into the, uh, the delusion that anything you say is going to be totally private forever, that nothing is ever going to come out because when the finalists are put forward and the executive session minutes are, are you know come out if you say anything at all in the executive session it will become public at some point except for the names uh, of the people who, who were involved so it's extremely important to understand that executive session doesn't mean that it's never going to get to be public yeah. the, the minutes have to reflect what went on so make sure that you understand that they'll be public at some point. Uh, a good point. We, we follow under that. Uh, I have asked uh, uh, Anita, our town clerk, to be the keeper of the applicants, and so they will be, uh, uh, she'll keep those. And uh, are there any other uh, comments? If not, I'd ask for a motion to uh, uh, agree to this. Um, I move that we accept the town administrative search committee confidential process. 
Second. Second. Any more discussion? Any discussion from the audience? Not uh, Norm. Fire chief, a police chief, two selectmen, and a state senator. We're independent thinkers, and I can assure the board and I can assure the public we will not be swayed. We understand uh, confidentiality from many different uh, places, uh, but we are there because we care deeply about the town. And I can assure you, Mr. Chairman, and the board, and all the folks, it will be independent, it will be fair, and it will be done right. Yep. Thank you for that, Norm. Uh, we're, we're not actually questioning that, but I appreciate your comments. If now, now, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. It may not have been necessary, but that does clarify it so we all know uh, where we're going. Uh, we now have uh, to review the uh, uh, the consulting firms that have sent in there. I guess none of them actually showed up tonight to make a uh, to present their wares, have they? No, not that I see. No. Okay. Well, uh, so uh, I'll take some comments, and then we'll uh, we'll vote on who we. I'll take a nomination for who we uh, want to select. Someone want to start? <laughs> sure. Uh, Don, I'll. Uh... Thanks. <laughs> uh, Happy to do it. What I saw to a greater and lesser extent in all three of these things, and I just wanted to bring it up. Uh, I, I guess it's a sign of our times, uh, but we, you know, they're all calling for uh, screening of the applicant's driving record, uh, their uh, FICO score, uh, uh, a number of other things that I just want to make uh, sure that whoever it is that gets hired has an understanding that those aren't ranking elements, that, the, that if indeed somebody has a 740 credit score versus a 710, it's not going to assure that he's going to bump past somebody in, in their thinking, that this is just due diligence so that if somebody's got a bunch of OUIs and uh, a bunch of bankruptcies that we know about it going into this. I mean, it's, it's, See, it, that's just standard background check. I mean, that, that's what that is. It's not, oh, I get that. I just don't want it to be part of the rating elements. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I, don't think, I don't think these folks would allow that to, <laughs> to I mean, that's why they've been selected, the people who they are. And not worried about that. No yeah, but they're going to be reviewing, so, you know. So. Uh, Don, other comments? No. Okay, I'll turn. You don't need to add. Right. Yeah, I, you know, I read through all the, the packets, and I, you know, we they had two of them present here at a previous meeting, and um, um, uh, based on all that, I make a motion. Sure. Um, I move. I uh, we can oh. still discuss it. Yeah. Oh, we can still can find. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, you know, based on my view, I think uh, um, the uh, proposal by Community Paradigm Associates would serve the town the best, and I move that we enter into negotiations to uh, conclude a contract for them to provide search services. Is there a second? Well, I'll second. Sure. Okay, Steve. I'm sorry. We yeah. can discuss. Um, um, couple of things. Uh, one, uh, two of them did indicate uh, the cost. A third one did not. Uh, he, they did. It's in the, uh, they sent that to me as a uh, separate letter. Okay. And I, but wait a minute. I scanned it, and this is a test to see whether you read all the pages of your document. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Are you sneaky, because, Larry? <laughs> because uh, I, I didn't get it at the first time and then I okay. scanned it and sent it to Patty. Are they, are they so if you the, look in the packet. Uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to ask you, are they in the same category? They're in the same, uh, they're all in the same ballpark. So let me just tell you that that is at the, uh, the that number, the $9,500 number, right. is at the low range of uh, all proposals that I've seen. When you had asked me to go out and find out yeah. what people would charge, Yeah. this is at the low range. So that's a good thing. The, good the range thing. we have on these, if you look under there uh, at the bottom, at uh, Patty said stuck it on at the end because it's a separate letter, but it's yeah. it's there. Um, uh, just a couple other comments. I, I 
you know, uh, I was underwhelmed by at least one of the proposals and, and maybe even two of the proposals, to be very honest with you. Um, the, the, the one that, that Ed has brought up, I think, is, is, the, um, is, the, is the best proposal, uh, most comprehensive, has the most recent experience on Cape Cod, uh, three towns, Bourne, uh, Brewster, and Provincetown. Um, and I have spoken with people from those towns who said their experience was excellent. Um, the only one concern I had um, relative to that and the other proposals was while they said they'd work with the selectmen, they would work with the selection committee uh, extensively, taking guidance from them as to how they wanted to set up the interviews and so forth. There were some proposals to do open <coughs> public meetings and have anyone that wants to come talk about what we need for a town administrator. I think the reason we selected this committee was to do that. Yeah. So. I, I think that would not be a useful waste of our uh, use of our time. So. Uh, I agree. We uh, it has come up. I think two of the three uh, make a point of saying that they're going to have some form of uh, uh, community input. Yeah, I, and I don't know. We talked about that. I'm not sure what that entails. Whether that means that uh, we provide a way way for them to bring information to us mm -hmm. to bring forward. No, they had, I think I mean, I'll leave that to yeah, I think between they, them and the search committee. Yeah, I think the search they, committee, you folks can that out. make a decision about that if you feel it's helpful, obviously. I, and I understand your concern. I also want to be sure that this is not seem like we're avoiding any uh, yeah, but I th action. No? I, I think uh, um, we, we spoke quite frankly uh, to media, Mr. Chairman yeah. that night about our feelings about that. Uh, the, the agendas will most likely reflect uh, uh, some open uh, uh, before we go into executive session, an open session that would that folks so could come, but it will be brief. Yeah, yeah. We we understand what Norm is, Norm we understand. Is, we un we know what you need. We know what the folks need. And Norm is uh, surprising to all. Can be pretty direct when he. Uh, <laughs> and he's, no. And he, no. And Linda can too. So they they explain that part. They explain that part to me. Uh, when I looked at it, uh, you know, I agree that. Uh, uh, they've uh, paradigm have had uh, they worked with Brewster recently it was Provincetown good mm -hmm. success and one of the things I was looking for on this uh, uh, evidence of I wanted to be sure that uh, they used they had a broad enough network and were able to do the uh, for lack of a better term the grunt work to, to elicit candidates uh, I know Linda's uh, Sabula is in the audience we were on the search committee the last time and initially uh, different companies because these guys are new but uh, I was disappointed have some discussions with them because they seem to rely almost solely on uh, advertisements rather than networking my sense is in this uh, endeavor the advertisements are uh, you sort of have to do it but I'd be surprised if they get any results mm -hmm. it'll be you know calling people up and doing the doing the hard work and, and these folks had to get some impression yeah. we're willing to do that Don yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I totally agree with what Stephen said. Uh, it, it, essentially, based on all of the individual threads, we may want to talk to them uh, before they go off with the committee. To have total faith in the committee. They're, they're, they actually are, are part of the community. They've been part of the community for many years. And they understand what's needed in the position. So that part I understand. The, the search firm has to kind of understand that this isn't what they typically get involved with where they deliver you somebody in front of the Board of Selectmen. What we're asking for is for them to cast the widest possible net, aggregate as many people that, uh, that they can find, turn them over uh, to the committee who has an understanding of what's needed, and thank them for their service. Uh, it's not so much of that middle part that they're normally used to where they go through things and they give you maybe eight or nine people that you can interview because those are the ones they determine. Yeah. But I would like them to hear that from our mouths. And, and you, you know, the chair is correct too. I mean, uh, these guys are going to do more than just throw a couple of ads in a newspaper because we could do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll proceed now. Uh, Michael couldn't make it tonight, and but uh, he did send me an email with his uh, uh, his preference is is. A, is a uh, preference is a paradigm yeah. consulting yeah. firm that we've talked about yeah, so if there's no more discussion and we'll you know there's going to be this is a work in process I think 
I'm picking on our two members of the search committee. You, you're meeting next, uh, what date? 25th. The 25th. And so uh, we'll keep in touch. And uh, I'm sure part of the discussion that, was, that they'll have with the consulting firm, and Don, to your point, uh, this is one where we may want to work interactively with the uh, search firm is to uh, uh, refine as much as we can what our, what our profile is, you know. Uh, we've taken a stab at it. I drafted some stuff which is commented on. That's fairly broad. Maybe we want to uh, uh, be, have a joint discussion to try to refine that some uh, to help uh, us all going forward. I, I think these folks are we'll work on that more than well. willing to help with that too. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. so we'll work on that. Yeah. So but it's a continuing process, and there, uh, I think all of them have given us about a three to four months time span to get it done. And uh, that's what we're, we're looking for. I will comment that we want to move forward. Uh, we have, um, we'll have, uh, I think, move as quickly as we can. Uh, you know, two aspects of that is that we do have an interim town administrator. We have, I keep saying this, but we have a great town staff. So we, uh, we can take some time to be sure we do it right. Uh, the other factor we're all worried about is, is coming to town meeting but whoever we hire is not going to be in place in time to affect town meeting anyway. So let's not, uh, you know, concern ourselves other than this get, as you folks have said, this gets the right person. So if no other comments, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And we'll, uh, uh, Joe, you can uh, mentally re return now. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll move then to uh, thank you for uh, reviewing this, and we'll follow up with I'll follow up with Bob Lawton, who's covering this, uh, to uh, contact and work out the agreement with the uh, consultant firm. Next on the agenda is the uh, uh, town minister's reports and his contact. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize. Uh, my copy is in your signature folder. Um, the contract that you have, have the, uh, in, in front of you. Back. Thank you. So um, the reason why this is, um, and this is on the agenda in the manner in which it is, is um, the, the contract obviously is for uh, under the, uh, the $25,000 threshold that um, I as interim town administrator have the right to, um, to sign. However, I did make a, commitment, make a commitment to the board to make the board aware of contracts that I've signed, but also to let you know that this is the second uh, type of contract that has been offered to this firm. So the total amount that we're paying to them is now in excess of uh, $25,000 by, by virtue of this contract. Uh, again, really, it's, it's there for informational purposes, but to alert the board that it has been executed, and generally speaking, we're now at a, a higher dollar amount, even though it's two different, um, complete, two different completely um, separate uh, contractual items. The uh, only item I would have on the budget timeline is just to remind everybody. Uh, Joe, excuse me. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I took notes and I left them at home. But now, just for clarification, this, uh, the funding for this comes from a 2020 uh, town meeting article. I'm going to have to rely on Mr. Howell's uh, I think copy here. I believe that's what the. I think uh, that's right. In the yeah, uh, correct. In the total uh, amount was around 105 uh, k, 104 and change, maybe. Correct. And so this is the design portion of that. That's correct. And you're still comfortable that we're, we're going to come under the 100, the, the total amount. So far, so good. We believe we are on track. Yep. Okay. Through conversations with staff. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? No. Comments? If not, all in favor? Uh, there was no motion. No motion? We, we need a motion, don't we? Oh, Normally there's a motion for There's a motion, okay. I, uh, <laughs> I move that we accept the GEI okay. Consultants Inc. contract for Round Co. Boat Ramp Reconstruction Project 16,900. Second. Is second. So I'm on the line now, everyone. Second. If that will uh, take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moving Thank ahead. you for that, Mr. Chairman. Again, on the budget timeline, just uh, remind everybody that this Saturday, March 7th, will be the um, annual presentation of budgets by departments to a joint meeting about the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen, and I will be making contact with the Capital Outlay Committee as well um, just to ad advise them of that to see if they'll be present. Um, I will be meeting with Capital Outlay throughout the month of March as well as a concurrent action. 
we haven't always had the capital outlay uh, committee uh, in this meeting, but I, uh, we've had at least one, re one member, so we've got another one here, but I thought it important that they be invited to uh, attend. And uh, I've said that uh, we have limited time, but I'll certainly entertain questions as we go forward, because uh, they're an important part of our discussion as well. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, excuse me. Um, I have a question because I have property, 16 acres of property that are abutting me, and I've gone to the assessor's office many times because I don't want the land to be developed. But the land that is marked off to, I don't know when it will be developed. Um, the property owners are in a miscellaneous file, so there's no knowledge of who owns the property. And according to the town assessor's office and the building, ins the building inspectors or what they are, have stated to me that when, li when property owners have chosen to put their property or unknown properties into the miscellaneous files, the town does not have any ex access to those property or landowners. And I said, well, you know, if there's a fire or an emergency and that's, you're telling me that, that the town has no knowledge of those persons owning the land. And I said, well, then how do you know taxes are being paid on them? And they said, we don't, we have no knowledge. And to me, since I'm abutting this 19 acres of land, I feel like I'm paying taxes on this property. And ever who's marked it off, the town does not know. So my question is, why in the 21st century is the town still allowing miscellaneous properties to be accessed? And if there's actual landowners, then why? How do they know or acknowledge that they have paid property taxes on this land? Now, 10 acres of this 19 acres has been marked off. And since the town does not ho know who those property owners are, how are they going to acknowledge that they've paid paid taxes on this property. You know, so I look at it that it's lousy bookkeeping. <laughs> uh, and they don't know how many miscellaneous properties there are out there. Yeah. Unfortunately, you raised a uh, subject that's a, it's a sore point for us, has been a sore point for a number of years, and that is how do we find out so-called owners, uh, unknown owners of property, and we've uh, through the years, we've uh, hired a, a attorney help. It seems to be a long, involved process. Uh, we're still trying to uh, go through that. Uh, I think the best I can do right now is if you could uh, leave us with your uh, the property area, uh, uh, we can try to do that. But it's, it, it seems to be, uh, I'm looking for help here if someone can, because it seems to be much more complicated than I can figure out. You know, you know what, I'll come in tomorrow, I can, you know, have your name, I'll go down to the assessor's office or the building, and they know, they know the land that I'm, t I'm talking about just because I've been in here numerous times talking to both. Yeah. What part of town is this? This is right by Cape Cod Tech. Okay. And the habitat for housing abuts this land. And the same thing happened with the Habitat for Housing on Oak Street, that no one knew who the landowners were. And I'm a butter of the land, and all of a sudden we were notified as the buildings were being, just about being put up, that the Habitat housing was going in there. And no one knew, and we went to the town, and it was all classified as miscellaneous ownings. So that's eight acres right there. Now we have 10 acres that have just been marked off and the town has no idea of who the landowners are. So it's like almost 20 acres of land uh, have been, well, the 10 haven't been <laughs> um, developed yet. But when you consider the eight or 10 acres that for habitat, 
that was developed. That's 20 acres of land. And I have owls, foxes, eagles, turtles living on this land. So, you know, you're going to allow that land to be developed because it's, and I've lived, my neighbor has lived abutting this land for 35 years. I've lived there for 25. Yeah, uh, come back and identify, but it is a problem we have trying to identify so-called un unidentified property. It's, it is uh, not as easy as it seems, apparently. We go through the old files because we have a long history of going back, maybe since colonial times, to try and sort it out through families, and it's, it's, it turns out to be well, more Well, I can tell you the we don't need to, we don't need, we can, we can, we're going to be here tomorrow morning if you stop by, we can continue with this. Yeah, I, but I can also tell you the land markings on the post, the poles that have, um, you know, the pink flags to mark off the property lines, however what they are. It says um, CB land, so I don't know who CB is. So I don't. We'll follow up with staff in the morning. We'll follow up. We'll, we'll follow up. And okay, see so I should. Come I'm in. just saying what you have is a, is a problem that generally we have in town and, and actually across the Cape. You know, they all blame it on the fire and the, the Barnstable Courthouse in the 1700s. Uh, they lost right. all the records and stuff. But see, I went to the Barnstable Courthouse because they asked me to go but to you know, the Registry of Deeds, and the Registry of Deeds did not have anything. No, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll follow up. Okay, okay. So I should come back in tomorrow morning. Uh, uh, well, he has to have a talk with staff tomorrow morning. He's going to talk to staff okay, first. Okay, so why don't I give you my phone number? You can do that. Right after the meeting, I'll catch up with you. Okay. So the next item I have, Mr. Uh, Chairman and members of the board, under the town administrator's report. Um, as you may recall, my budget message, I talked about a um, temporary and until further notice hiring freeze. However, I also mentioned that that was separate from any searches that were underway. I'm very uh, pleased to report that two of the searches that were underway have been completed. Um, one of them is for a part-time program aid at the cultural center. The other one is for a part-time weight room clerk at the community center. Uh, Carolyn and I had a chance to uh, discuss this on Friday. Um, she was good enough to bring the folks in, had a, a very nice meeting with each of the two recommended um, candidates for these positions. My question really for the board is, I just wanted some guidance as to, I know there was discussion before, but where these are part-time positions, is this something where the board would be invoking the 14-day right? Um, of affirmation and uh, separately we're prepared to do offer letters pending background checks. So I did want to use this opportunity to get uh, a sense from the board as to how you'd like me to proceed when it comes to part-time positions. Don, it looks like you have a, a sense of this. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you Mr. Chair. Uh, Chris had a problem getting his head wrapped around this. The charter provision for the 14 days was really uh, a buyer's remorse uh, clause. It was it was designed so that if so, if you found out after the fact, after you hired somebody, that somebody was not adequately performing, that the board, through a four fifths vote, this is non department head uh, things, could reject the person within that 14 day period and essentially return them. Uh, it is not an affirmation, though. We don't have to affirm uh, that after the 14 days is up absent an action by the board to reject them, they're hired. I mean, and, and they're part of staff. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. We'd actually try to make it a little more proactive in the past just so we knew what was going on, I think. But as I pointed out it's to Chris, required. that wouldn't have stopped the board from taking an action within the 14 days because I think, you can't I think, revoke that. I think, Joel, if you could just uh, hire them. provide us information of what uh, who's hired and send us an email on that, then we'll have 14 days to uh, to react. Okay, so um, I think what I'm hearing though is we hire and then hire give the us person. a name. Yeah. Like, so, because what we'd like to do is we'd like to have them start as soon as possible. These are positions that have been open for several months. As far as I understand it, our, our direction is clear. Go ahead and then just give us a name for information. Absolutely, we'll do. And Thank background. you. Ed? And again, we're very excited about these two individuals. You don't look that excited. Ed? Well, you know, if you wanted it to, to eliminate that possibility, you could present their names in a proposed motion that we rescind our 
uh, with you. Uh, it's just window dressing, though, because if, yeah. if you found out something that you didn't know, you still had the right in 14 days. Steve, you have an opinion on this? I'm, I'm fine go ahead. to go ahead. Hire him. I'm fine with hiring him. Just give us the information. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. We're very excited. No. That concludes my report. It's over. Okay. No uh, Selectman's report. Uh, Steve? That's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. It's uh, news. Ed? No. Nope. Don? Uh, Ed? Just, just uh, sorry. encourage everybody to make it to the polls tomorrow. Election day. That's right. Carry on with democracy. Don? Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is one of those I'm going to say it, but I'm not expecting an answer for it, things. Uh, you were here last year when I asked these schools to provide me with overhead expenses, and I'm still waiting from last year for that. But I do re remember them promising they would give us a final red line version of the uh, proposed Monomoy. Uh, yeah, yeah. They did say that, but they did uh, say that. Ha does anybody have, re have any remembrance of them putting it in our mailbox and I just missed it? Or? Well, uh, Joe, you and I will talk about it tomorrow. We might. We'll, we'll uh, contact the school and see if we can. I had an opportunity to speak with the superintendent Friday evening. We're going to be following up this week. Because I do um, remember I know the deadline reading. was February 28th, and to my knowledge, we haven't received it yet, but I'm hopeful that we will very soon. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? If not, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. That was mostly for Steve's benefit. Because